Yeah, I and I'll treat you for Yes, yes, that was a, a gift from me to Christmas, wasn't it? Yeah. Along with my gift for me at Christmas, the uh, huh. Wrangler Jean Waco. Yes, although I gave you a few gifts at Christmas and you were like, oh, this doesn't mean I have to give you, you anything back, does it? And you, I was like, no, of course not, because yeah, that's the decent thing to say in response. That's, you know, the thing. And you were like, well, well, you didn't <laughs> give me anything, actually. And I said, well, you know, I was going to be the bigger man about it. And you said, yeah, exactly. I was going to let you have the opportunity to be the bigger man. Uh-huh. You're a very curious chap, Pete. Oh, and, that, is <clears throat> and that's why I called the series... The Curious World of Pete. What's been tickling your fancy in the news over the last few weeks then? Anything? Um, not much um, in the news itself. Yeah. But I have been hearing about a spate of disappearances mm. uh, in Ireland at the moment. Okay. Over the last month, five people have just <coughs> gone missing. And what do you attribute that to? Well, I was discussing it with my friend <coughs> in Ireland. Yeah. And he said that there's no pattern to, you know, the types of people or where they're going missing. Okay. But I'm thinking, yeah, maybe we've got a killer on our hands. You you like a nice fresh killer, don't you, to follow? I do. It's, you know, other people, they do the soaps. Pete, he does the serial killer. Of course, there's no, yeah, there's no proof yet that it is a serial killer. Mm-hmm. Maybe they've just run off. Right. Yeah, nobody knows. But I'm hoping. You're hoping it's a serial killer? Yes, I'm hoping somebody will turn up. That doesn't make me wrong in any way. (laughs) It makes you peed. Yeah, if people go missing, they usually end up dead or not missing. Right. Now, frankly, I think not missing and dead don't have to be mutually exclusive. I think you can have both together. Idea of putting a moon base uh, in place within sort of eight years. Yeah, I heard about it. What do you think? What's your thoughts on that? I don't see it happening. President after president have uh, been trying to push for this and they've said, oh, what's the point, what's the point, what's the point? I think, really, rather than trying to go too far through our universe, we need to work on a better fuel uh, or propulsion system, don't we, really? That's faster. Well. And put all the money on well, that. Didn't they make uh, <clears throat> the portal gun out of moon rock? Right. So why don't we put a base on the moon, mine moon rock, and then use it to create portals to the other yes. side of the galaxy? Problem is, you see, you're confusing fiction with reality there, aren't you? Computer games fiction. Look, have we actually tried to use yeah the molecules and chemicals found in the moon rock <clears> as <throat> a propulsion source? I don't know. I think it's worth looking into. Just because Portal did it. They may come up with the idea, but yeah, even if it doesn't create portals, it might actually create some kind of fuel source <clears throat> which we can use. There you go. Pete's told you, NASA. Look into it. Pete said so. And if Pete said <clears throat> so, you better do it. But really, they just need a better... They need a better propulsion system, don't they? Well, what about these uh, whole eco-fuels that mm-hmm. people keep talking about? Right. Yeah, the ones made of plankton and things. <laughs> hey! I'm sure I've heard that somewhere, right? <laughs> well, tell me all about it. Uh, I think it's uh, using plankton or some kind of uh, fungus or something like that. Okay. Uh, and it's a natural eco fuel. <clears throat> uh, but I don't think that is really feasible. No. I mean, given the fact that <clears throat> how much fuel you need for <clears throat> yeah, to send the rocket into space. To try and create a moon base, ideally, I think probably the, the way they want to go is to get 3D printing a bit, <clears throat> a bit um, more in the forward field. Because 3D printing, I mean, it's, it's coming on. They're using 3D printing for things like uh, airplane parts, you know, the minor parts, like yeah. hinges and things like that, I think. But, um, you know, they, it'd be good to get to a place, really, where they just take a 3D printer up into space. Oh, and then just... Right. And then land and then print out in 3D 
the base they need or the items they need because that way remember every yeah that's gonna you know, be a massive <clears throat> printer to print out an entire moon base <laughs> you do it in pieces and then attach them okay <clears throat> but you know but the, look, the point is Pete look at the space suit right yes look at how big those globes are you know how big those pieces will have to be just to grab them well it would have to have a, a, an attachment piece on it that attaches to the hand wouldn't it for fine tuning but um <clears throat> You know, there you go, NASA. Rod Soldier, put a little <laughs> hook on the globes, a spaceman's hands. Then they can pick up things that are smaller. Mars and all that would be nice because we can take a look at some new materials and things, can't we? I mean, we keep on sending these bloody you know, robots and rovers out there. I've never seen one come home. <clears throat> I suppose they, I suppose they analyse it there and then on the planet and then send the reports back electronically. I'd assume. Because they've got analyzers, components attached, haven't they? Right. But, yeah, they can't test that, yeah, for things like fuel sources. Well, there's a, I think the problem with space travel is once you start needing fuel, I think you start losing the idea of how to effectively travel through space. What you need, uh, yes, you need fuel to get into space, but then you don't need it. Brilliant idea. I don't believe nobody thought of it before. The idea of the 3D... I've got it. I, I know yeah. how it works. Go on. So, you've got your spaceship, it goes into space, it's uh -huh. in orbit. Yes. Now, what you then have... Yeah, you've got the compartment that opens up on the back of the shuttle, mm -hmm. and out pops a hammer. And just hammers the back of the ship, and away it goes. Wow. So, it's a giant flying gun. Yes. Now, if you need to stop, yeah, just use your hammer on the phone. <laughs> a gun that shoots itself. So it's a gun, you point it, you go bang, and the gun flies out of your hand, hits someone in the face, and they go, ow! That bloody thing's dangerous! Now, look, what I'm saying is, in space, everything <laughs> is a lot lighter. Yeah. Just a tap from a person can send a ship going the other way and send the... The hitter hmm. flying the opposite direction. <clears throat> well, see, here's the other because problem. Because there's no traction in space. You know, there isn't really an up or down, is there? Right. So, uh, <clears throat> we make sure that we're in the correct alignment. So, isn't yeah, it... Bang with the hammer, off we fly the mark. Is it? Don't you think there's, there's the possibility for possible embarrassment later down the line? Like, so, you've got, like, humans have colonised different areas of space, and you don't know what up and down is. So, you would have one... Uh, ship going like this because it's took off from its planet and it's like this and they might meet another ship coming upside down it's like he's flying upside down and they say oh you're flying upside down no yeah. you're the bloody ones upside down and they carry on like that you never see that in the sci-fi so there's some reason why I wonder right we're going to use gyroscopes alright let's get off space shall we <clears throat> no, I like this hammer's idea you can have hammers all over the ship and have them on the wings so yeah you could Hammer the wing to turn yourself around, yeah, upside down and down tied up. Little one on the front to stop you. But wear and tear. Break. Wear and tear, Pete. They build these ships to be tough. Uh, <laughs> they can enter our atmosphere and burn up and still be fine. I yes. think a little hammer isn't going to break it. Come on, you can buy them for like £2.40 <clears> in the <throat> hardware store. It's like, oh, we don't have enough fuel. The, the hammer accelerator on is not working. We're going to have to get out and do it manually. And they come out there with their little toffee hammers. Yes, but because <coughs> of the lack of traction in space, yeah, <coughs> you, can't hit a you can't hit a shot with a hammer because you'll fly the opposite way. That's why you have to use the hammer built onto the ship. See, that's, that would have been great to see Little Miss Sunshine set in space, wouldn't it? How the hell they get that van going. <laughs> Why don't they just use a giant um, catapult to shoot a ship into space? Save your fuel. Okay. NASA, listen to this man again. <laughs> giant catapult. Why didn't you think of that? Yeah. That puts the rude into rudimentary, you know, Pete. And think about it. Yeah, when you want to get a ship back from the moon. Yes. Spring. <clears throat> spring. Okay. So Project Zebedee. <laughs> Yes, Project Zebedee. So Project Zebedee, hammer accelerators, 
Seriously, you should write all this up as some sort of fictional universe that 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 humans have progressed in this manner. Love to see your take on it. Yes, well, <clears throat> I'm sure you just rewrite it anyway. So, what did you think of the news that they are uh, going to be making uh, Minecraft Lego? Crazy, isn't it? Essentially, Lego already. <laughs> Pretty much. So, Minecraft Lego. So it almost seems ridiculous that it seems really suited. Like the obvious thing, really. We have a little Minecraft sheep and little Minecraft piggies. I'm going to assume so. Little Minecraft gallons. Yeah, with the little bows. Mm. Little Lego bows. <laughs> Would you buy it? No. Nah. Then again, I haven't bought Minecraft yet. Although, apparently, it is going very soon to our Xboxes. When it does. What did you think of the uh, the TV show? The reality TV show that had their contestants have to drink a pint of uh, donkey semen and that it was never aired in any way. So, a good show. Was you... Japanese, right? No, it wasn't Japanese. It was American, I believe, wasn't it? Or American, Australian, one of them, too. Huh. Do you know, I didn't try and pay too much attention to it because, you know, it's reality TV and I tend not to, to watch that. But, you know, the story was weird enough to catch my personal attention. I think they, they said it would be. Um, in bad taste. But whatever authorities let it go through in the first place must have okayed it initially when, when it, during the proposal stage. Oh, we're, they want, we want them to drink a pint of semen. You've got to be kidding! That's porn! No, it's donkeys. Oh, that's fine then! Yeah, there's nothing bad tasting about donkey semen. I mean, what the heck? <laughs> what the heck? But uh, as far as I'm concerned, you know, if you go on these reality shows, then Sorry, bigger wait. fool you. You're asking for it, aren't you? You know, if you uh, wait, 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 wait. have to do shit like that. I mean, you see these these ailing celebrities go on these shows like this, don't they, to try and regenerate their careers back. And then we end up with some zombified thing that is now back in the attention of the press because it's sat on an island and put a tarantula in its mouth. Did they have to drink the pint of uh, donkey semen? From a grass or from the source? You you think a donkey? You think a donkey would put out a pint? If you jerk it enough. You seem to be the expert on this. I know you, you folks that live out in the country, you've got some funny ways, maybe. Yeah. Mm, I don't. I seem to have run out of milk from my tea. I know. No, nah, we prefer horses. And with that, we move swiftly on. Now they definitely put out a pint. I said we were moving swiftly on, didn't I? Did you not hear the moving? <laughs> Andy doesn't say that. No, Andy just thinks that <clears> you <throat> could drink a pint of you know, bull's milk. <laughs> yes, Andy thinks he can drink a pint of bull's milk. Check that out, guys. Annotation on screen. Now, what about this spitting issue? There's a really bad case of tuberculosis that's kicking up in Asia at the moment. I think it's India, isn't it? Something like that. It's, it's, isn't it uncurable, I believe? And uh, So I've heard. The concern is um, that it will come this way. Oh, apparently, it already has. Really? Yeah. That's why they bring in this no spitting law. So when when now, do we think this no spitting law? If I need to spit, yeah. If I ever I need to spit, mm. yeah, and I'm outside, yeah. I've spit <clears throat> into the bushes, not on the path. Yes, I do. I'll do the same if 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 it really comes to it. If if there is something like toxic tasting in my mouth, for example. I've just walked by and there's a load of petrol gone in my mouth, taste or something, or I'll spit into a piece of tissue or something. Well, I don't really carry tissue, but obviously I've got... Normally, I don't carry tissue. <laughs> right. If you walk just down the road for five minutes, it's actually shocking if you send your eyes downward how much spit there is on a pavement. Of course. And that's just the fresh ones, you can see that hasn't evaporated. The pavements outside are filthy, filthy. This really is something else. And you can see them just doing it at the bus stop while you're waiting. So it needs to be stopped. I agree that the law has to be passed. I mean, how far along are they with it then when you were looking into it? Uh, they said that the law was already in place in London mm. and uh, somewhere up north. Right. So hopefully uh, it should be here by the end of the year. Right.